Now back to those European elections. Only left them momentarily, can't get enough of them. This morning it was the turn of the Green Party to launch their campaign. Unveiling their manifesto, they've made some eye-catching pledges, promising to scrap tuition fees, renationalise the railways and put in place a living wage. They're hoping this platform will help them treble their number of MEPs to six. Here's their leader, Natalie Bennett, earlier explaining what makes the Greens different. When voters vote Green, they get Green. We don't just highlight the problems, we provide lasting solutions. So this is an election about choice. There are three choices. There's the politics of fear, that's UKIP. There's the politics of business as usual, that's the three currently largest parties. Or there's the politics of hope, which is the politics of the Green Party. The Green Party offers real change that improves the life of everyone. Real change for the common good. And the leader of the Greens, magically, is with us now. <laughs> Welcome back onto the programme. Glad um, to be back. Natalie <laughs> Bennett. Um, you said you're planning to fight the Euro elections as the anti-UKIP party, offering hope, not fear. What's that actually going to mean in reality? Well, what that means is we're the party who, on issues ranging from immigration to climate change, are actually standing up to UKIP, who are saying we need to tackle this dangerous race to the, the bottom in terms of immigration rhetoric, whereas the three largest parties have really been basically chasing after UKIP, trying to out-UKIP UKIP, whereas what we need to do is stand up to them and say this is dangerous, this is damaging, it needs to stop in terms of immigration rhetoric and climate change is here, it's real and now and we need to take action. But Green voters and potential UKIP voters aren't the same people, are they? I mean, you're not battling for the same vote here. No, but what we're doing is we're seeing, I mean, for example, a, a guy from Manchester who I spoke to last week who said to me, I haven't voted for decades. I thought politics was such a mess that I didn't want to, be, want to touch it and be involved with it. But now, after the rise of UKIP, I can't sit on the fence anymore. I'm going to vote Green because we need to stand out against that, that UKIP rhetoric. But if someone is concerned about immigration and the effect of the European Union on the UK, they're not going to vote Green, are they? Well, I think the thing is, what we need to do is when you talk to people and say, what if you say you're concerned about immigration, what are you really concerned about? People are concerned about low wages, and that's a failure of government policy, a minimum wage that's not enforced, a, a minimum wage that should be a living wage. It's a f issues of housing, which again is a failure of government policy. It's issues of crowd crowded schools and hospitals, and that's a failure of investment and a failure to plan with, with our Agovian free school revolution. So when you talk to people and pick their concerns. Often their concerns aren't really immigration. They're all of those facts that the society is not working for the common good, but for the good of the few. Right, well, let's look at those uh, policies. We mentioned a few of them beginning, scrapping tuition fees and mm -hmm. prescription fees, renationalising railways and energy companies, introducing a living wage. Mm -hmm. How much will that cost? Well, first of all, if we, if we want to pick through some of those one by one, first of all, bringing the railways back into public hands, which Caroline Lucas now has a, a private member's bill now before the House, doesn't cost anything. You simply wait for the train operating contracts to lapse or the companies to hand them back and you take them and you run east coast as east coast now runs. If you, if you take tuition fees you look at the fact that rising you know asking people to pay back loans that they don't earn the money to pay back hasn't worked out anyway. Um, so you know, we, ha we have to actually get this society reshaped. We need to make wealthy people pay their taxes, multinational companies pay their taxes. Right. You'd have to increase taxes in some way. You, you would increase income tax. Uh, very much for the wealthiest and for multinational companies. I mean we had the policies, we had fully costed policy in 2010, the general election manifesto. 94% of people were better off under our tax policy, which saw the 50p tax rate starting at £100,000. Oh, right. So you'd have the 50p tax rate. That's, that was the uh, 2010 that, manifesto. That, that is that what it's going to be then? Well, what we'll be looking at is we'll be doing the figures for another costed manifesto in 2015. I would expect that the top rate of tax will be higher than that in this manifesto. Higher than 50, mm -hmm. uh, 50 pence. Although, of course, the figures and the government always argued that you just wouldn't get the sort of money and revenue that Labour said you would get under 50 pence for, for incomes of 150000 Why do you think you'd be able to get well, so much more to pay for well, all these other policies? Well, I think, I think I think you have to ask the Tory party where the Tory party gets its money from and how it draws that conclusion. Oh. I just I can't believe it. I mean, the message coming from from uh, my colleague on my right is uh, if you're going to do well and aspire to improve your position, don't do it under the Green Party. If you're a multinational, you want to bring your headquarters to the UK, don't do it under the Green Party. Oh, and by the way, we will fight the European elections on national policies. I'm, I, I, I appreciate that uh, the, the Green Party 
is supporting me um, against I, I We are and indeed. I'm, yes. I'm grateful for that support <laughs> from uh, your colleague in the House of Commons. However, I'm, I'm afraid I can't subscribe to anything you're saying. I think this election is about offering people a choice on Europe, and oh. I don't believe your party can so do, do that. So you're in favour of an in-out referendum, though, aren't uh, you? Yes, we, we believe... Do you trust with UKIP we, on that? Uh, we, we, we believe we trust in democracy. If it's good enough for the Scots, it's good enough for the rest of us. Uh, and also, we believe in staying in Europe. We, we would campaign to stay in Europe in that referendum, but we need a reformed Europe, and we're very much against the proposed EU-US free trade deal, which is absolutely disastrous for democracy and absolutely disastrous in terms of living a situation where, US, where big US companies can sue national governments or the EU. Well, I'm glad we got to that, because that <laughs> seemed to me, when I was <laughs> reviewing green policies, to be the one that stuck out. Is it seriously argued that it's against the interests of the United Kingdom and indeed Europe to enter into a free trade, trade arrangement with US. North America? I mean, it, it's quite extraordinary. The other point, I'm fascinated by the notion uh, that you can renationalise the railways and it won't cost anything. What about the annual running costs thereafter? Mm -hmm. Who's going to pick these up? And the other point... Well, 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 the well other, the taxpayer and, does now. And, and, and the other point I want to make is this. I understand that the Greens rejected any question of a reduction in the EU budget at a time when everyone agrees that there is an element of redundancy in that budget and that it should be reduced in order to ensure that we get value for money. What? No value for money. OK, there's a lot of issues there, and I'm going to pick the most important one, which is the EU-US free trade deal. What about first, the first, first, first of all, let's focus on that, the fact that um, you know, this is, the negotiations are being conducted in secrecy. Uh, even MEPs are not being told about that. And if that's the case, you know, why can't we do this openly, democratically? And more to the point, well, we're because... talking about harmonisation of regulations. Now, in the US, you can take chicken carcasses and wash them in bleach and then sell them to the public. That's against uh, e EU rules. You've got beef, other meat, laced with hormones that are sold in the US. We're threatening with all of those. And you know, European governments this, could be actually sued if they create this, regulations this, to protect exactly their own public. This is exactly why the negotiations are carried on in private. Right. Because if you carry them on in public, then people make that kind of point. A negotiation... <laughs> so the public shouldn't know about no, these things? Of course not. But the public will eventually <laughs> be presented with a package which contains all the details. Oh. And, that uh, and that will avoid the kind of grandstanding which we've just oh, seen. Right. And you want to go from two to six? Uh, yes, a swing of 1.6% in this proportional representation election would allow us to treble our number of MEPs. All right, Natalie Bennett, thank you very much.